I've talked about small hive beetles a few times, and this one is our newest pest. I'd love to say it's our last pest, but there's still some other stuff out there we don't have in the US, but man, this one is enough. I loathe these beetles. You are gonna love to hate them as well. And if you live in the South, you are gonna have to learn how to deal with them. They're opportunists. They're not necessarily just gonna take over and kill your bees. A lot of people tell me, oh, the beetles killed my bees. They, they didn't. Your bees were in trouble and these guys came in and they just kind of mopped up the mess. Originally, they're from South Africa. In Africa, they're not considered a, a terrible hive pest, but they're considered a bad pest at the honey house. If you leave buckets of combs and, and, and unprocessed honeycombs around, these things will be all over it. But the African bees tend to do a pretty good job of, of keeping these beetles out of their hives. It was found in the US in 1996. Uh, it was first discovered uh, on the East Coast. They found them down in Florida, and there was a big package bee industry there. There was a lot of mobile pollinators moving bees in and out. And so these beetles started to spread, but these beetles can also fly several miles on their own. So uh, we can't, can't necessarily blame other people. You can start out with a perfectly clean hive and no beetles here in, in this area. You come back in a couple of weeks, you'll find a couple of these little bugs running around in your hive. So don't be, supp don't be surprised at all. Uh, their life cycle takes them in and out of the hive on a regular basis, causing all kinds of mischief. So the adults are the, the ones that invade the hive. So they are just the right size to hide in these cells. They're a little bit bigger than a bee's head. Uh, they can fit through that eighth inch mesh on your screen bottom boards. And they know they're not welcome, so they hide from the honeybees once they get in the hive. Any little crack or crevice on your frames or in the boxes, underneath the edges of the, the, the frames like that, anywhere that's inaccessible to a bee, these beetles will hide. And so your bees actually post guards inside the hive. These bees are trying to keep the beetles from coming out. Sometimes they'll go and get propolis and they'll smear it around in there and, and try to keep them, they'll kind of imprison them. But these beetles are so crafty. They figured out somehow that honeybees are always feeding each other. When a honeybee is hungry and she doesn't have time to go get some food, she'll take her antenna and she'll stroke the mouth parts of another bee and that bee will instinctively spit up a little drop of honey or nectar from her crop. That's what these beetles are doing. So this photo was taken in an observation hive like we have out here in the lobby. So it's a piece of glass there and this beetle is hiding, several beetles are hiding down there and these bees are trying to get at them and this beetle runs up and taps the bee on the mouth parts and she says, oh, room service, Blah, have some honey. And this beetle says, ha ha. And this bee over here says, you idiot, don't do that. And she says, oh, I did it again. She feels really bad. And this beetle tells the other ones, hey, you gotta try this. So your bees are party to the Geneva Convention. They feed their prisoners. <laughs> They're keeping them locked away. They're keeping them from causing mischief in the hive, but then they feed them. A lot of insects that are not active, like a beetle sitting in a crevice for weeks, they don't need a lot of food. They don't need a lot of calories to sit around. And so they can remain there for a long time. Meanwhile, more and more beetles are entering the hive, sneaking in every day that they can. And so the population of beetles in the hive is slowly building up. You may not know they're there because they're hidden down in different places. But then you open up a hive and what do you do? You take everything apart. You scrape out the propolis. You pull out the frames and it's essentially a prison break. Or maybe you think, oh, this hive is doing great. Lots of bees. I'm going to make a split. And you take half the bees out and you put them into another colony. And then now you have half the number of bees, but you've let all the beetles out of jail, and so now they're all running free. Or could be that the colony just swarmed and half the bees left, and the ones that are left behind can't maintain all of those beetles that are in there. So they literally come out of the woodwork at some point, something happens. Usually what I find happens is in the summertime here, for some reason, a colony goes queenless and can't make a new queen. The population starts to go down and that's when these beetles come out and they basically they have a big old party. They start to feed everywhere 
and they're scavengers. They eat anything they can find. They eat pollen, they eat honey, they eat dead bees. They'll eat their own dead, anything. This little slit right here is where a beetle has used her ovipositor to slice into the capping of the bee brood, lays eggs inside, the eggs hatch, and will actually eat your bee brood. They hatch out much faster. It takes a couple of days for the, the, the uh, beetle eggs to hatch. Once they get going, you might find these tiny little larvae inside. They're, they're very small. You may not even notice them at first, but they'll start to get bigger. They move around and they start to feed on everything. And when they start feeding on your honey, they introduce a yeast into the honey that causes it to ferment. And we call that a slimed comb. And it's disgusting. It smells like decaying oranges and it bubbles out of the honey cells and it dribbles down. And it looks like this and it's awful. And the few bees that are remaining in the hive that couldn't keep these beetles out, they look so sad. They look at you like, I tried, there was nothing I could do, I'm so sorry. If you've got a solid bottom board, you may even see something like this draining out the front. If it's a screen bottom board, then it'll just go right down through. But uh, now the beetle larvae don't care. Now that they've done all the damage they can do, they just exit the hive. Oh, let me back up. The, the odor of fermenting honey attracts more beetles. As adult beetles are flying along, they smell that, and it's a signal that, hey, this hive is failing. So come on in, get it while you can. So they'll go through a reproductive phase and lay eggs everywhere too. Now the larvae are fully grown. They, they don't like the light, but at this one stage, the, the fully grown larvae are what we call wandering stage, and they orient toward the sunlight. It helps them suddenly find the entrance, and then they drop down onto the soil down below the hive, and they'll burrow down anywhere from four to 10 inches depending on how dry the soil is. And they pupate down there, and in a couple of weeks, they dig their way back out as adults and go back to the beehive. And if your hives all got slimed out and you're so disgusted that you set fire to them all and hung up your hive tool and said never again, these beetles don't care because they can go for a week or more without feeding as adults, and they'll just fly off and they'll find your neighbor's beehives because they can go over a mile or, or more. So. This is how you end up with hive beetles in your colony, no, no matter where you set one up. Uh, if you are feeding protein patties to your bees, pollen substitutes, make sure your bees are eating them because if your bees aren't eating them, something else will. They'll lay eggs and you'll have little wormies here. Uh, that's one of those uh, grease patties. Lots of debris in the bottom of your hive, they'll feed on that. Don't just scoop this out and throw it on the ground. They'll keep feeding on it. Put it inside of a plastic bag, freeze it, hit it with a hammer, yell at it, then throw it in the trash. Make sure that, that they're dead before you just toss them out though. The best treatment for small hive beetles is strong colonies. If that colony is packed with bees, then the beetles don't stand a chance. But a colony that is packed with bees is on the verge of swarming. So. It's a very delicate balance. If you were a beekeeper in the 70s, you only had to go outside twice. In the spring, you stacked up a bunch of empty boxes, and in the fall, you came and hauled them all away. But now we have to make sure that we balance the amount of space in the hive with the bee population, and we have to add more supers on as needed, but not get carried away, because otherwise, these pests are gonna get in there. So don't over super and make sure that you stay queen right. Make sure every hive has a good laying queen because when they go queenless, that's when these beetles will, will do their thing. Check mite is the only chemical available that is approved for use in your hive against small hive beetles. It's also one that was used against varroa mites, but turns out it's really good for small hive beetles too. Well, I don't know about really good, but it's the only one labeled. You get online, you'll see people recommending all kinds of horrible, nasty things inside your beehive that don't need to be there. This is the only chemical. And you need some little uh, trap like this that will let beetles in to hide in the dark away from the bees and not let honeybees in. And you can put these down on the bottom board or, or up on the, the top of the, the inner cover 
where you're going to encounter a, a lot of these beetles. But uh, you got to make sure you read and follow the, the labels. But it's really of limited use because uh, you're not going to get that many beetles that, that are going to go in those traps on a regular basis. Some people drench the soil, and there's various things you can use. Uh, one of them is called Guard Star. You get this in a bee catalog. You can get this at your farm co-op store probably. You mix it with water and you pour it out on the soil in front of the hive. And if you've got a screen bottom, you want to get it under the hive too and, and probably just all sides because those beetle larvae can crawl before they go down into the soil. But this stuff will bind to the soil and it'll, it'll stay there for anywhere from probably 40 to 90 days unless you have a lot of rain and then you may have to reapply it. But it is toxic to bees. Do not get it on your beehive. So don't use a garden sprayer that you pump up and it makes a big mist. Use a, a, a sprinkling can and soak the ground. Uh, before you apply it, mow any ground cover, clover, dandelions, anything attractive to bees right there. Mow it down so it goes right into the soil and remove any water sources. You don't want to contaminate that. Uh, you could also apply nematodes. These are microscopic worms that attack beetles in the soil. Uh, these two species here, if you can spell that real quick before I change the slide, Heterohabditis indica and Steinernema rio brave. Say that six times fast. You can purchase these from uh, organic insect supply houses. You can find them online. Just search for nematodes for small hive beetles. You don't have to uh, necessarily get get those long names or you can snap a picture of that if you want but um, you do it the same way you mix it with clean water you pour it out on the soil what you get in the mail is like a little ziploc baggie full of jello and you just mix it with water and you have to take it on faith that you just released five million microscopic hungry worms okay maybe so those sit in the soil, and because they're alive, they have to have beetle larvae to feed on, but it will keep that population going. It depends on your soil condition and the temperatures and things like that. Uh, some people swear by them. Other people don't seem to think they do a whole lot of good. So we decided we would test them at our research station down in Hope. And we uh, put them in controlled plots, and we released hive beetles in there to see if they survived uh, both the hot, dry summers in Arkansas and our, our winter conditions here. For two years in a row, we had the wettest summers on record and the warmest winters. And they did survive, so we know that they can, but uh, you may have to reapply them every, every couple years if, if that's something that uh, you think you might want to do. Those nematodes will not harm any plants or any of uh, your chickens or any livestock, your pets, your children. They strictly feed on beetle grubs in the ground. So don't just go out and, and buy all this stuff and, and put it in your soil, though, unless you've had a massive emergence of these wiggly little things. Otherwise, you're just wasting your money because it's not going to stop beetles from getting in your hive. Those adult beetles are going to fly over and they're going to get in your hive. But if you've had some slimed hives and you know there's thousands of beetles in the soil, then you might want to treat with not $100 bills, but you know, you might want to apply something and that will prevent all those larvae from maturing and coming back out of the soil. So not necessarily a preventative, but a, a cleanup. The key to uh, controlling small hive beetles, though, is really to limit that adult population. If you can keep the adult population under control, don't let them have the chance to mate and reproduce because the adults are an annoyance to the bees and to the beekeepers, but it's the larvae that do all of the damage. So you can use various in-hive traps that will help to keep those under control. And there's a lot of different traps. Some work better than others. I don't like these. They're really hard to reset each time you catch one. They're hard to bait, but uh, this was the, uh, one of the original ones called a hood trap developed by Mike Hood in South Carolina. But uh, it was a little plastic box that has little different compartments. There's a slit in the top of it here that's just enough room for a beetle to go in, but not a, a honeybee. And so they would go in there to hide. And you use apple cider vinegar as a bait. Apple cider vinegar mimics the odor of fermenting honey. And that's the signal to all the hive beetles that this hive is about to collapse and everybody should get in and join the party. And so if they smell that, then it lures them in. And this bigger compartment in the middle here has vegetable oil. 
And any insect that gets coated in oil is going to drown really easily because remember they're breathing through those tiny little holes called spiracles on their sides. So when they get coated with oil, it smothers them. You can use soapy water. You can't use regular water because a lot of insects have, are waxy and they repel water, they're exoskeletons, but soapy water breaks the surface tension and they'll, they'll sink through that. These traps though had a lot of empty space. What do bees do in empty space? They build comb and then they build drone comb. So you're manufacturing varroa mites, unless you get in there religiously and cut all that drone comb out and, and get rid of those drones. So you could do that, or an improvement on that maybe is one of these frames. It's the same concept, but it just takes up the entire uh, space of that frame. There's a slit in the top, and you can slide this little plastic compartment out. You can put uh, vinegar in there, you can put oil in there, and you can trap a lot of beetles. The oil will go rancid after a while, so you do have to, to periodically uh, change it out, put fresh vegetable oil in there. Um, if you've got chickens, chickens love oily beetles. They're like potato chips. They can't eat just one. Makes a great crunchy snack. So you can take the oil, strain it through a, a screen, you can put the oil back in and, and reuse it a couple times, but you can, you can give a snack to your chickens. Uh, another advancement in beetle battling technology was, was this trap that goes on the bottom. You set it on the bottom board and you fill it with oil again and put this uh, above it and the beetles go and hide down in this dark hole in the bottom away from the bees. It's close to the entrance so as they come in and they encounter a bee they'll drop right down and they'll die in that oil. But you had to have this shim to lift the hive up and it had to be perfectly level or else all the oil would, would flow out. and a lot of times when you have a solid bottom board, you tilt your hive forward so if it rains, the rain runs out and not in. And so you had to level your hive and then sometimes uh, that would create problems. But if you wanted to look in there, you had to dismantle the entire hive. It might be this high. You got to unstack all those boxes to get down there and you couldn't just slide it in and out. If you did, you could, might be able to slide it out, but when you slide it back in, you would crush 100 bees that were sitting on the bottom board behind it. So this is the Freeman beetle trap. This was invented by a fellow here in Arkansas, Jerry Freeman. He's a good guy. Uh, but it's the same kind of concept, but there's a drawer that goes around to the back of the hive. And the bees come and go at the entrance like they normally do. It's got a regular screen bottom board, but this tray slides in and out from the back. So you can fill this with uh, your vegetable oil and the beetles drop down in that and they drown. And you just, when you're ready to check it, you just slide it out and then you can clean it up, put more oil in if you need to, and slide it back in. Again, you got to keep it pretty level because otherwise it's going to gonna tilt and you want a, a nice film of oil all the way across it. You can use mineral oil, which doesn't go rancid, but it, it's a lot more expensive. Uh, and you can use soapy water, but that has a tendency to evaporate. So it, it, if you're going to do that, then you have to come along periodically and make sure you've still got it in there, especially in the summer where it will evaporate really, really quickly. And if you're not paying attention, then you get a lot of debris that's not just beetles in these traps under your hives. So these are pollen pellets that have fallen off of bees. They go right through the floor. Uh, when they emerge from cells, little bits of wax and, and other debris falls down. And if this tray goes dry, Beetles will hide down in there and then they'll just lay eggs because this is a giant pile of delicious, nutritious beetle food. Remember, they're scavengers. They'll eat anything organic and pollen is a superfood full of protein. So it's another case of use it, use it right, or don't use it at all. So someone asked earlier, how, when do you put them in? How long do you put them in? And, and that kind of thing. Um, I would, I would go ahead and, and keep, them, keep them going pretty much all year round. You don't have such a problem with beetles in the winter, so you don't have to keep them full of oil, but you can slide that tray in and, and close up the bottom of the hive just so there's not a cold draft under there. But, you know, as long as the, the bees are foraging, they're active, they're coming and going. I mean, there's beetles out right now. If you open up a beehive right now, then there's beetles in it. They've been active for several weeks. So you want to get rid of as many adult beetles as you can all the time because if two beetles meet and fall in love, they can lay hundreds of eggs. So you want to prevent that. There's other types of traps that you can use 
further up in the hive or in small nuke boxes and things like that. Um, this is the AJ Beetle Eaters. It's just a little black trough. You fill it with oil and you snap the top on. And when you do, uh, you push it down and it doesn't quite want to go. And then when it goes snap, all the oil pours off down your arm. So I don't really care for those, but that was one of the early versions. And it sits right here and the beetles, just enough room for a beetle to go in and, and hide from the bees. Uh, then they came out with the Beetle Blasters, which was the same basic concept. They fit between the frames. They're a little bit deeper and they're transparent. You could see through them. Uh, but with these, when you lay it down, it's got these flaps on the side. Before you lift it up, take your hive tool, flip it over and kind of grind down both sides and then lift it up and you've probably got a flattened beetle that is hiding under the edges of those. So. For people who say, I don't have any hive beetles, I recommend these because you'll find out that you probably do have a few. When you take these out though, you can't really set them down, they always fall over. These are square on the bottom, so they sit up. And uh, these hang off the side of one frame, they don't have to go between two frames. So I like these because you can put them against the wall where beetles are more likely to be going up and down. They, they travel up and down away from where all the honeybee activity is in the middle. So you often will see them on the, the edges. And these have a little compartment in the middle for your, your apple cider vinegar. You can fill these sides with oil. And when you close it up, they also have a little plastic lip here. So as the beetle doesn't quite go down in the oil, sometimes they, they walk around inside. It's difficult for them to get over that lip and back out. So these, I think these have some advantages. Plus uh, these other ones, these are disposable, uh, but these are, Supposed to be dishwasher safe if you want to get propolis and beeswax and all kinds of nasty stuff inside your dishwasher. Uh, these are entrance traps. So it goes on the front here and it's got this little groove here around the entrance where bees will just step right up over that. They can't fit under it, but a beetle that comes along will hide in that and he can smell the hive odors from the inside. It's screened off, but he can smell that. And when they go in, they drop down into this little tray here that it's full of oil. Again, you slide it out and put it back in. So this intercepts beetles going into the hive, but it doesn't get rid of any beetles that are already in there. But if you were setting up a brand new hive, might be something to, to try to uh, see if, how many you can, you can keep from getting in. But you've got to maintain a really tight hive. So everything has to fit tight. The lid has to be on tight. Uh, once you have older equipment with cracks on it, there's places for beetles to get in all over the place. Another similar idea is the beetle baffle. These are little uh, strips of metal that go around the edges and they're bent over at a, just a right angle so that a bee can walk right up, but the little beetles can't quite get around that. And so they wind up uh, going around and around in a circle and can't quite get up into the hive. These can uh, be used in conjunction with a Freeman beetle trap underneath. So the beetles get tired of trying to get up and they'll go down, hopefully fall into that oil. But beetles can also fly. So if a beetle is out here in the middle, they could just make that little one inch flight up into the combs. Another method a lot of people are, are claiming success with is Swiffer cloths. If you know what a Swiffer is, it's a, for cleaning your floors and things and, and make sure you get the dry ones. Some of them have uh, like, like oils and, and perfumes and stuff in them, but bees don't like paper. They try to tear it up and take it out of the hive, but these cloths are really fibrous. And so they, they try to tear it up and they fluff it up. And the bees can't really do a whole lot with it, but you can take one of these cloths, maybe cut it in half and lay it out on, on top of the frames and close up your hive again, put them in between all the different boxes. And what happens is the beetles have spines all over their legs. And as they crawl across it, they get stuck in these fibers like Velcro and they can't get out and they wind up just starving to death there. So it doesn't kill them, but it traps them there. Occasionally you'll trap a honeybee, but they can usually get out of it. They're bigger and stronger. And so every time you go in your hive, you just peel these up. They've got beetles in them, put them in a plastic bag, tie it off, throw it away and put some fresh ones in. They're pretty cheap. 
no oil to spill inside your hive and, and things like that. So some people swear by these, other people say they don't work. So I think uh, it kind of depends on where in your hive you put them. So that's something that you can experiment with and, and see if you like it. But any dead beetle is a good beetle. So if, if it works even a little bit, then that's a step in the right direction. I just like the video of this one suffering. <laughs> You're, you're going to love to hate these guys. There's one more tool that you probably will have at hand that, that will help you a little bit, and that's your hive tool. Now, numerically, it doesn't put a big dent in the beetle population, but it will make you feel good <laughs> every time you feel that crunch. Because when you open your lid, the first thing you're going to do is look inside the lid and on the, the top board, or top of the inner cover, and you're going to see beetles crawling around. They love to get in these little cracks around the edge, and, and they'll hide behind bees, but the bees, you'll see the bees kind of backing away, like, get out from under me, and you can hit them with the hive tool. So that's a fun game for the kids.